Hello, friends. This is Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio in beautiful Marysville, Ohio, on this gorgeous summer evening. Um, and we're gonna do we're gonna paint a turtle tonight. Okay, okay. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. So before we get started, I always like to talk a little bit about you know what's what's going on at the studio. We are doing virtual once a month, which is super exciting. It tends to be around the last Saturday of the month. Uh, send me ideas. I don't or I do have August chosen, but I don't have September chosen yet. August is gonna be hot air balloons, which I think will be lovely. I don't have September chosen yet, so send me your ideas. I would love to hear what you guys wanna paint. Um, and then we're back in the studio doing classes and parties and things are happening. It's super exciting. So let's see, before we get started, Let's do our inventory. I always like to check, make sure we have everything we need before we get started. Maybe not everything, but a good, a good idea for what we're gonna need for tonight. So first things first, I can see y'all are painting at your homes. You're painting maybe not in a studio area. So take a look around, make sure you don't have anything you're super concerned about if you get paint on. The paint that I'm using is Blick acrylic paint, student acrylic paint. I love acrylic paint because it dries really fast. It's pretty easy to work with, but if you get it on your clothes and it dries, it's a real bear to get out. So let's take a minute, look around, make sure you're not standing on grandma's oriental rug that you'd be devastated if you got paint on it, right? Um, I have my apron on, make sure you have an old shirt on. If you're over at somebody else's house, something I've done before, you could run to the bathroom, flip your shirt inside out, because it's always better to get paint if you have a nice shirt to get paint on the inside. Lynn, do you like how I said run to the bathroom? Not just like flip your shirt, at, right? I'd do that too, that's me, you know, you know. Anyway, modesty, we'll practice modesty a little. We have none of that, zero modesty. So again, my reminder to you, take a minute, look around, make sure you're not, not gonna get paint on anything that you'd be super upset about later. If you do get paint on something and you notice it um, later, Murphy's Oil Soap is your friend. Uh, let's talk about Murphy's Oil Soap real quick. My little tip to you, that's what I clean my brushes in. I see, I know some of you have been painting with me for quite some time and I'm sure your brushes are starting to feel kind of loved right? I want to talk for just a quick second about uh, cleaning brushes. I like to take a little bit of Murphy's oil soap and put it in a cup just a little bit when I'm done and then soak my brushes overnight. You want to make sure that when you're soaking your brushes, you don't go up past where the brush connects, where the metal connects to the handle. That'll break that glue down. This is a pressed fit, this is okay. You wanna get Murphy's oil soap up in there to get all that paint out of there, but you don't wanna get it up here. So I'll put just enough to cover the bristles to get up, to get up into that press fitting, leave my brushes soak overnight upright in that. And then in the morning, wash them under a warm soapy water like this, right? till they run clean and then lay them flat to dry on a paper towel. I know a lot of people like to set their brushes up. Don't set them up until they're dry. Leave them lay flat to dry. If you set them up to dry, they're gonna start to do this, right? They're gonna start to splay out, which is fine if you have a fan brush, but if you have a detail brush, that kind of sucks, right? To have your detail brush get all crazy. So lay them flat to dry, then you can store them vertical if you want. Anyway, little tidbit. Okay, so I have my apron on, I've checked my surroundings, things are good. I have my canvas, I have our inspiration painting here. We'll talk about this in a minute. I have a 16 by 20 stretched canvas. Decide now, are you gonna keep it vertical? You're gonna go horizontal. I think this painting works well vertical, so I'm gonna stay vertical. Are you gonna paint your edges, right? Decide now if you're gonna paint your edges. Because what you wanna do, if you're gonna paint your edges, continue painting them, right? Don't get sloppy halfway through and stop painting your edges. That ju that's just messy and unfinished. So you don't have to paint them at all if you don't want, up to you. But if you start painting them, you, you should probably finish. Okay, put our inspiration painting back up there. Let's talk brushes. I have for this painting, a big background brush. Somebody asked me at the studio the other day, what kind of brush this is. It's a filbert because it's curved, but if you're gonna buy it at the store, it's an oval wash brush. 
right? It's like a three quarter inch or a one inch oval wash brush. And then I have some kind of a medium flat brush and some kind of a pointy brush. Those three, that's what I'm gonna do this painting with. And then I have a water cup over here. When I'm not using my brushes, they're gonna live in my water cup. Whatever brushes I decide I'm gonna use tonight, I'm gonna dump them in my cup and leave them there. And remember the water in your cup is cool or cold, never warm or hot. It always wants to be cool or cold. And then paper towels. I've got a couple paper towels down here to dry my brushes off on. Something else that I keep with me, paint pen, Sharpie marker. This is good for fine details or to sign your paintings. I think every artist should sign their painting. Um, I'm really bad at signing with a brush. I always have been. So I just sign with a Sharpie. Okay, let's talk about our colors. So tonight we're going to use a lot of white. So I have a lot of block out white. Yours might be titanium white. That's okay. But mine is block out white. I have a nice bright yellow. I have a nice bright orange. I think it's called chrome orange. I have bright red, phthalo blue. I love phthalo blue. It's so versatile because it's so deep and rich, but you can add a lot of white to it and really brighten it up. Phthalo green. And I love phthalo blue and phthalo green together because they give you that real rich turquoise color. Okay, and then a tiny bit of black. I just need that tiny bit of black for a little bit of detail, a little bit in the eyes, just a tiny bit. Okay, I do believe that's our supply list for the evening. Let's get started with this. Again, remember, if you start to feel like you're not digging it, you're falling behind, you're starting to struggle a little bit, Take a breather, walk away, okay? Just sit with us and enjoy, bless you, Lynn. Just sit with us and enjoy the rest of the night, okay? All right, so let's talk about how this painting's gonna work, okay? We're gonna paint that entire background first. We're gonna use that big brush, a lot of white, little blue, little green. If you love green more, that's fine, use it. If you wanna go all blue, that's fine too. But I do like to point out, Acrylic paint blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend. It turns to plastic. That's why it's so hard to get out of fabric if you get it on fabric, okay? So I'm gonna start at the top and work my way slowly down. I see some people when they paint their backgrounds, they jump all over the place. I'm not a fan of that. You can do that if that's your style, but I'm not a fan of that because it will dry before I can get back to it and I won't be able to blend it. So I have a tendency to work top down and work nice and slow, get it the way I want it and move down so I can blend it as I go. This background, a lot of white, little blue, little green. As we work our way down, pretend the turtle's not even there. As we work our way down, I'm gonna use less white, more blue, more green. I want it to be darker at the bottom. That's gonna help weight our painting down a little bit. It's one of those things you don't really think about and you don't really notice it, but if you squint your eyes and pretend the turtle's not even there, you go, oh yeah, it is, it is a lot lighter at the top and it's darker at the bottom. Helps weight it down, okay? All right, let's move our inspiration out of the way and let's get started. Nope, you won't sit there. All right, I'm just gonna put him down here. Okay. Very first thing I'll do, I've got my brushes in my water cup. I'm gonna tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the water cup, right? Soften that guy up a little bit, okay? I might have crusty paint left over in there. So I'm just gonna soften him up a little, dry him off on the paper towel. Now, anytime you take paint, we always go in the edge, always the edge of the puddle. So I'm gonna pull a lot of white to start. Don't be stingy with your paint. Okay, use a lot of paint, especially if you have a new brush that's all collapsed down and still all nice and pretty, you're gonna have to use a lot of paint. So a lot of white, tiny green, tiny blue, little bits. And my brush stroke is kind of like an infinity sign, right? Sweepy back and forth and back and forth. Okay, 
Again, I can't express this enough. Use lots of paint. Um, when we paint at the studio, the brushes that I tend to give people have, people look at them, they go, oh my God, that brush has seen things, right? Because it's all, Brr. I love those brushes because they're all splayed out and they hold a lot of paint in them. The newer brushes that you have are so collapsed down, they just don't hold paint. They're not broken in yet. So you have to work hard to get more paint on the canvas. Okay. A lot of white, little blue, little green. Nice and light at the top. And have you decided, are you painting your edges? If you're painting your edges, now's the time. Get on up there. You wanna make sure, and if you're painting your edges, if you have decided to do that, you wanna do that while you have that color on your brush, okay? I don't want to have to go back later and try to match that color up. I want it to look like my painting is wrapped wrapped right around that canvas, right around that uh, that wood backer. Okay. Ooh. And breathe. I feel like I was forgetting to breathe there for a minute. I just get so excited to paint, right? And I get into it and I forget to breathe and so this is my reminder to you, breathe it out. And as we paint this, you can leave it textured. I'm gonna get nice and close so you can see. I've got a little more green down there, a little more blue up there. Some people, their style is to paint and get it like smooth, all one color, like nice and even and smooth. It's not my style. I love to see those individual brush strokes. It's whatever your style is. Edges, don't forget your edges. And make sure as you're painting, this is probably gonna be hard to see, but if you can see speckles, if you can see canvas weave in there, little speckles, you need to get some more paint on your canvas. Okay, get some more paint on your brush. And again, we're gonna get darker as we go. So less white as we go. And I mentioned earlier, blow dryer is something you might need tonight. We may need the blow dryer for when this uh, background is dry. So if you finish before, before me, before the rest of us, you're gonna wanna dry that background. That's the purpose of your blow dryer this evening. Oh, I was just thinking about our September virtual. I need to look at the calendar, but that may be the weekend that Hocus Pocus is released. Hocus Pocus 2. Maybe I'll have to look at the calendar and see. But we might do uh, something Hocus Pocus themed. That would be fun. So I'm, I'm about halfway down and start getting a little darker, less white. This is a good time to talk about blending. Let's talk for just a minute about blending. To blend, you have to go back a little bit into what you just did, okay? So if I wanna get darker down in here, I have darker paint on my brush. I'm gonna start in this new section and you can see how different that is. I need to take one step back, back up into that lighter 
picking that color up and bringing it back down. So I'm working back up a little bit, picking that lighter color up, coming back down. Back up. I've seen it um, in class a lot. People are hesitant to, to work back into what they just did. But to get a nice blend, you kind of have to do that, right? You have to take one step back, two steps down, one step up, two steps down, one, right? It's this constant up and down. All the while, remember your edges. Let's see, just keep working around, making sure I'm getting my edges. I'm really bad about remembering to paint my edges. So by me reminding you, I'm kind of reminding myself. If you have an easel like mine with this little top piece, I like to take my take my canvas and hang it up there. So now I can get to that bottom edge. And how are we doing? Are we getting darker as we go down? We're using less white. I'm still using a little bit of white, a tiny bit, but not much at all. And the reason I'm still using a tiny bit of white down there is because the paint I'm using, it's Blick Student Acrylic. Let me show you what it is. It's Blick Student Acrylic. I love student acrylic paint because it's inexpensive, I can buy it by the truckload, right? It's a great thing to learn with. The thing I don't like about student acrylic paint is it's really transparent. It's really, really see-through. The only way to give weight to it to make it nice and opaque and solid is to add either black or white. You have to add one or the other, a little black or a little white. That's why even down in the bottom, in the bottom of my canvas. I want it to be nice and dark. So I'm using mostly blue and green, but I'm still using that teeny, 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 tiny bit of white to give my brush strokes, make my brush strokes nice and smooth and have them be nice and solid. If I'm not using any white, you're gonna be able to see like streaks in my paint because it's so transparent. All right, so I'm gonna finish this out. And I'm hesitant to say it. So my, my dogs, we'll talk about them in a moment. I have, uh, I have two beautiful babies and they're being really good. And I know I've just jinxed us. We are so screwed now, right? They're gonna lose their minds, but they're being really good. but I'm gonna finish out painting my edges here and then set them loose outside in an effort that they'll hopefully continue to be good. All righty. Okay, got all my edges. 
Okay, when you're done, when your whole canvas is covered, brush and water cup. Um, you might even go rinse out at this time, get clean water. Let's, um, let's talk about how this is gonna work now. I'm gonna give it a good, how about 10 minutes? It's 725. So at 735, we'll come back together. So 10 minutes from now, we'll come back together. You'll wanna have dry canvas. So take it to the blow dryer. You'll want a little bit of clean white for the next step and a clean big brush. So clean water. So dry canvas, clean white, clean water. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and take care of the, take care of the puppers, send them outside. We'll be back in oh, nine minutes. We'll be back. Oh, 
Okay, we still have five minutes or so, right? But I'm, I'm to the point that I'm, I'm ready to move on, but we still have five minutes. So again, you wanna make sure before the next step, your canvas is dry, right in the middle, right where we're gonna put that turtle. I'm not concerned too much about down here, but right in the middle, dry canvas, clean white paint, clean brush, clean big brush, okay? <sighs> anybody, anybody in the chat? Got to take a peek here. No, you guys are quiet tonight. That is okay. Let's see, what can we talk about? What haven't we talked about? Let's see, chicken update. The chickens are well. I know that's something we always talk about. Phyllis is ruling the roost. Um, something you may not know, we had, we had two roosters at one point. We had Betty and George. Well, we had three roosters, but Vern went to live with um, another friend. Vern has his own ladies now, but we had Betty and George and we finally had to send uh, Betty to chicken heaven. Betty was just not kind. Betty turned out to be a real jerk. So Betty had to go, Betty went to chicken heaven. So that was sad, but hello, Don. I'm so glad you're here <laughs> and your daughter is adorable, by the way. Did she tell you she stopped me at Meyer? Is she there? <laughs> Hello? Hello, friend. Oh, okay, so I see you wearing your, uh, your Crooked Door apron. Um, I need to put that in the chat also. The Crooked Door merch store is open just until tomorrow night, like late night. Yeah, it's only open for like two weeks and then they close it. Um, so if there's something you want, let me know, get on there and order. Uh, I just posted it on Facebook a couple days ago, maybe. But the way the way Graphic Stitch works, um, which is who my merch store is through, they keep it open for just a couple weeks. Then what? Then they close it and then they take everything that everybody ordered and they put it in production. So I don't have to hold a lot of stock on hand. You get specifically what you want. So the um, this time in the store, we have big water bottles, like big metal, kind of like this, like these big, big metal water bottles. Those are in the store. The t-shirts like we had last time aprons new aprons they're like the ones that we have at the studio but they're black so they're longer um they have the adjustable neck um oh i'm sorry bummer don't you hate that facebook <sighs> blessing and a curse man blessing and a curse um we found that out with the auction the um uh, the Artathon auction, people weren't getting notifications on their on their auction items. So we'll have to do something different for that. But anyway, oh, I also have in the store right now, um, zipper hoodies. So they're zipper and non-zipper hoodies. So kind of excited about that with the full color logo. So the non-zipper hoodie has the big pocket in the front and it has the logo on the front. And then the zipper hoodie has the logo on the back in color. And they're Heather Gray, because you know, dark charcoal, Heather Gray. I think our colors really pop on that Heather Gray. So anyway, the merch store will uh, will close soon. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take a few minutes right now and go ahead and post that link in the in the comments. I'll see if I can find it real quick. I'll be back. We have about two minutes before we move on. OK, so before we move on again, you're going to want dry canvas. Lynn, I'm feeling threatened by your knife. <laughs> I just looked over at Lynn has a palette knife. She's wielding it. <laughs> get it, girl. You get it with that palette knife. Um, so dry canvas, clean white, clean brush, clean big brush. And I'm going to pause for just a minute. I'll be back. I'm going to get the link to the to the merch store.
Okay, there we go. I just posted the link to the to the merch store in there. And um, they're not shipping anything. So if you're out of state, like I know, I know Amanda is, if you're out of state and you want something, um, go ahead and order it and have it come to the store. And then I will get it to you. I will take it and ship it myself and get it to you. Okay. And is it going to be weird that when we get the items, I'm just going to wear one of everything? I'm gonna have the hoodie, the zipper hoodie. I'll have my apron on. Oh, we have ball caps this time too that are like embroidered. I don't even wear baseball caps, but I will be rocking a crooked door ball cap. It's gonna be weird. I'm gonna make it awkward. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, time to move on friends. Let's do this. So dry canvas, clean white, clean big brush. So Let's put our turtle shell on there. I'm gonna hold this up here. Let's put our turtle shell. So my turtle shell, if I not stretch my hand out as big as it'll go, but if I open my hand kind of relaxed, that's about how big my turtle shell is. I'm not talking about the scalloping around the edge. We're gonna add that on extra. We'll add that on later, but let's just do this oval here. And you'll notice it's kind of, it's maybe at a 45, it's kind of diagonal, not straight up and down. You can put your turtle straight up and down. That's between you and your turtle. But I'm going to put mine at like a 45-ish, right? I think that's a, that's a lovely angle. So about, you know, about that big. Now, remember we talked about our paint being very transparent, very see-through to get these colors to really pop. One of the things we love about this painting is we have the blues in the background and the orange turtle shell, complementary colors, right? Opposites on the color wheel. Complementary colors really pop against one another. It's gonna be really hard for us to get that pop of color unless we put white down first, right? We're gonna do our whole turtle in white first, then we'll lay the color on top of it. That'll give it a nice solid base. So that orange will really pop against that blue. It'll all make sense as we go through this. White first, okay? All right, here we go. Big brush, clean it out, dry it off. And you can start small if you want and then build upon it. But I'm gonna put my, my turtle shell right here in the middle-ish of my canvas, maybe a little high, like maybe an inch higher than middle, about at a 45. And it's an oval and I'm gonna fill it in, okay? So again, if I relax my hand a little, open my fingers up, kind of relax, that's about how big I want that oval to be. So I can start small and build upon it. I feel that's a little small. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. And I like starting small and building on it. Um, that helps me kind of manipulate it and get the shape I'm looking for too. Like, does it need to, do I need to round it out a little more at the bottom? Do I need to skinny it at the top a little? Pretty good about that. Relaxed hand, right? About that big. Ish. There's no right or wrong here. Okay. Come on in, friends. I hear you out there. Come on in. Okay. Feel pretty good about that shape, about that size. Pretty good about that. Now I'm gonna continue on with the white. Again, cause I want that nice solid base for all those colors to live upon. So I'm gonna continue on with my big brush and I'm gonna do scallops all the way around the edge. And the way I'm gonna do that, do you see, I just picked my canvas right up. 
I did that. That's my reminder to you. Your canvas is not glued in place, right? My brain works. When I do something like this, my brain works up and around to the right. So when I get down to this bottom section, my brain is going to have a hard time coming back up that side. Well, I'll just rotate my canvas on around, right? So I'm going to start here at the top and I'm going to lay that brush down and give a little half circle, boop. And then right beside it, boop. And I'm going to go all the way around my turtle like that, boop. Just doing little half circles. Nope, yep, a little more paint. And again, this is just in white for now. We'll add color, but just white for the moment. Oh, my shape's getting a little weird. But that's the beauty of paint, acrylic paint, right? I can always go back and fix the shape. Okay. So by putting those scallops on there, that made my turtle a little, my shell a little bit bigger. I think it's a, it's a lot smaller than the one I did last night though. I'm okay with that. Every painting's different, right? I'm okay with having a turtle that's a little bit smaller. If your shell got really big at this point, and you feel you don't have room for flippers, don't worry about it. You'll just run those flippers right off the edge. I ran into that on this one. I didn't have enough room for the flipper. Right off the edge, he went. No big deal. Okay. Okay. Just gonna smooth this out a little. Get a little more white paint there in the middle. I want that nice solid, solid base for all that beautiful color to live upon. Okay. And at this point, right now, I'm done with that big brush. For the next step, I'm gonna move to one of my smaller brushes because our next step is to put the head on there. Uh, people in class last night were giving um, Deer Turtle a little tail little triangle tail. I feel like mine might need a little tail. It's gonna happen. Because now that I look at him, I'm like, he's kind of naked without his tail. The problem. Oh my goodness. So I let the dogs back in and now I have big time wrestling again on the sofa back there. I'm waiting on him to come this way and my canvas to just go flying. And it will all be captured for posterity on a YouTube video. So I have, um, I have two technically pit bulls and they're both just sweet as pie, right? One's honey and one's sugar and they are sweet as pie. But when they play, they play with their mouths wide open and it looks like the most horrendous thing on the planet. But that's how babies play, right? Play with their mouths. Okay, so medium brush, we're gonna use some more white. Let's go ahead and get the get the head on there. So take a step back and look and figure out which way your turtle is is angled now, because I know best intentions were to get it at a 45 on there. Is that really what happened? So I'm going to look and see. Yes, that is, in fact, the direction my turtle is going. And his head's going to be out this way then. And I'm going to do a little tail nubbin down there. Medium brush. You can use your pointy brush if that makes you happy. It's entirely up to you. 
but I'm gonna continue to work in white. And you can make the head smaller and then make it a little bigger as you go to get it in proportion with the body. But the shape of the head, so the way I do this, I'm laying my brush to figure out where that head wants to belong. And I'm gonna draw a line there. So I know that's where the head is going straight up out of. And then the head is kind of a diamond shape. I feel like that might be a little small. I might, I can build upon it. And it's a very roundy round diamond shape. It's not super angular. I think I might want to point it out here a little more, give him a little more of a nose. maybe widen his neck out a little bit. Pretty good about that. I'm gonna put that scallop back on there. All right, feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna transition real quick to my pointy brush so I can put a little tail, little nubbin. And the tail is just a little, a little triangle, right? A little roundy round triangle. And I'm laying my brush again to get the, to map it out. It's gonna come straight out here. And then I can, I can build on that. Oh, cute. A little tail. <laughs> Little tail. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give you just a minute because then we're gonna put flippers on. And the front flippers and the back flippers are shaped a little differently. We're gonna do those front flippers first. Again, just in white. As we're doing this, think about what color you want your flippers to be? What color you want your shell to be? And I'm gonna give you just a minute to ponder that. And I'm gonna send the, send the crazy puffs back outside. I'll be right back. All right, come on friends. I know, go run it out. Oh, the sass is strong. So much sass. Okay. All right, flippers. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your flippers, it sounds silly when you say it out loud, but I, I wanna say it so we're all clear. You wanna make sure that you have space between the neck and the flippers where they come out from under the shell. So I'm gonna give myself about three fingers, about a three finger distance from the neck on around the shell before I start my flipper, okay? I don't want my flipper to be coming out my neck. So about three, three finger widths is about the measurement I'm going with. And I'm gonna use that medium-ish brush. Again, whichever brush makes you happy. And we're gonna do it all in white still. And for my front flippers, let's see, three fingers-ish. I'm going to go up and out like a real, real loose, not, it's not even 90 degrees. It's, it's bigger than a 90 degree. Okay. Get a little more paint on my brush here. I'm going to come down a little bit. It's kind of like a, um, like the end of maybe a hockey stick. Round and back in. Okay. So if I had to map it out for you, I would say this top part is a parallelogram, <laughs> right? And then you got to connect it into the body. And I'm going to fill that in with white.
I love any time I get to use the word parallelogram. And we're going to do the same thing. So I've got I've got my top left flipper. And now that I did the flipper, I'm like, I feel like the head might need to be a little bigger. I'll put the right flipper on and see, but I might go back and make that head a little bigger. It looks a little small in proportion. Okay, three fingers. Start with the top. I'm gonna go up and oh, off it went. That's okay. I'm gonna start in his armpit <laughs> and curve it out. That is such a hard shape to explain. And I do love that I just said turtle armpit. Oh, turtle pit. All right, fill that in. And again, my back flippers are gonna be shaped a little different. They're a little shorter, a little stubbier but I'm gonna go back and make my head a little bigger. My, I think my head is a little small for my flippers. You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna make the head too big and I'm gonna be like, what just happened? There we go. Feel pretty good about that. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to get those flippers on there. Oh, if you're painting your edges, did you wrap that flipper around? If it went off the edge of the canvas, did you wrap it around the side? Up to you. Okay, so here we go. So if I gave myself that three finger distance from the, from the neck to the arm, if you have a tail down there, you're gonna give yourself a little three finger distance also. Okay, and start with the bottom part of that flipper. And the bottom part of that flipper is just gonna swoop out. This is the bottom edge. And then I'm gonna swoop out this way. So it kind of builds. And then angle it down, it's kind of like a triangle. Like a diamond, triangle, triangle, triangle. Fill it in. Okay. And then that other one, start with that bottom edge. Swoop it out. That was an odd shaped flipper. I'm okay with that. I like to tell myself my, my turtle's in the water swimming. So he's not gonna be like perfectly straight, right? Maybe that one flipper's doing a little dance. All right. Perfect. Turtle flippers. <laughs> that little tail just makes me smile. <laughs> this is a little nubbin. Okay. So I'll give everybody a minute to get to the same spot there. You wanna make sure everything's white, right? We've got our turtle on there and all white. Doesn't have to be dry before we move on because we're gonna go back to the shell fur. Mm. No, we're not. What do you think about this? No, we're gonna paint the head and the arms and then we'll do the shell. But anyway, doesn't have to be dry. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit how we're gonna paint this. So yes, this is my painting, but this is an inspiration that someone sent me from somewhere in the vast internet. 
I have no idea why the front left and the bottom right are blue green and the top right and bottom left. Anyway, diagonal, those are purple. I have no idea, not a clue. Does that make you crazy? I, you can change it if you want. I kind of like it. I don't know why it's that way, but I'm going to stick with it. So I'm going to do this flipper and this flipper at the same time. And then I'm going to hop diagonal and do this flipper and this flipper at the same time. Okay. But first I'm going to start with the head. So let's use that medium-ish brush. And I'm going to paint that head. I'm going to start with blue and a tiny bit of white. And I'm going to fill that head in from the nose and follow that contour down. So blue, little bit of white. I'm going to start at the nose. And fill it down around and into the shell. Up and down. When you get close so you can see what I'm doing. Painting it vertical. Up and down from that nose point. Okay. Covering up all that white. Now you may feel like I'm moving fast at this point. I'm moving on because I wanna blend. And we learned earlier, acrylic paint only blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend, right? So I have this blue on here that I've just put on. This is just blue and a little bit of white to make it nice and opaque. I'm going to um, clean that brush out because that blue is so powerful. I've got to get it off of there. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of green, yellow, and a tiny bit of white. Green, yellow, white. Phthalo green, bright yellow, and white will give me like this glorious lime color. And I want a bright spot right down the middle. So I'm gonna start clean brush, green, yellow, white from the nose down and it's gonna look weird, but then I'm gonna work my way out to the left and it's gonna blend with that blue as I go. And then you can clean your brush out and do the same thing, go back to the middle and go to the right. I'm actually just gonna flip my brush over because I have that paint on the other side of my brush. So I'm gonna go back to the middle and work my way out to the right. And look at that, I have that lovely bright spot in the middle. I still have blue on the edges. Now I might to accentuate that a little more if I want that to be a little brighter in the middle, rinse my brush out and do that again while this is still wet. So clean that brush out, dry it off. This is optional. You can leave it that way if you want, but I'm going to grab a little more green, a little more yellow, a little more white. And I'm going to go back here to the middle again, to that stripe right down the middle. So from the nose down to the neck. And again, it looks weird when you first do it, but then I'm gonna go left, picking up that, that paint that's already over there, it gets a little darker, flip my brush, go back to the middle and work it over to the right to that blue. How cool is that? Blending is one of those things that takes, it takes time and practice, but 
if you're committed to it and you and you play and you work with it, you can do some really cool things. Part of the struggle that I see people have in the studio is knowing when to stop, right? I have that. I kind of wanting to get back in there and play a little more. If I play, I'm going to I'm going to lose all the variation in color, right? I'm going to lose that bright spot right down the middle. I just got to walk away and leave it. Okay? All right. So, I'm going to head over now since I have blue or I'm sorry, since I have green, yellow, white on this brush, I'm going to do this flipper, my top left flipper and my bottom right flipper. So green, yellow, white is where I'm going to start. Green, some yellow, little bit of white. I'm going to paint this whole flipper in. And then I'm going to do reverse of what I just did. I'm going to add blue to it to blend. So with the head, I started with blue and added the green, yellow, white to blend. With the flipper, I'm going to start with the green, yellow, white and add blue to blend. Okay. So green, yellow, white. Fill that flipper in. And you see I'm starting out at the tip of that flipper. I'm following that contour from the tip of the flipper all the way back in toward the shell. And then I'm gonna Clean that brush out. Grab a little bit of blue. Little bit of blue. And while that's wet, I'm gonna start out here at the tip of the flipper and go right back in that bottom edge. And I'm gonna do it a couple times to blend it. Okay, let me do that again. Little bit of blue while that flipper's wet. Start out here at the tip. Go along this bottom edge. And do it again a little further up the flipper. A little further. All right, and I can feather that in nicely. Okay, let's do the same thing on this bottom flipper down here. Clean that brush out. Green, yellow, white. Green, yellow, white. Paint the flipper in. So there we go, green, yellow, white. Clean my brush out. Grab some blue. And it's the underside because that blue is going to shade it a little bit. So blue. Start by drawing that line and then go back and forth a couple times while that green's wet and blend it. Grab a little bit more. There we go. Now we're shading it right now with that blue. You can play a little bit if you want and highlight it. You don't, you don't need to, this isn't something I did in the original. But if you wanted to play a little bit, you could take a little bit, a little bit of white. I've got some messy white on that brush and come across the top. You can play in there as much as you want while that flipper's still wet. 
but any shading you do, you're gonna wanna do it now while it is still wet, shading and highlighting. Okay, so there's my green flippers. Let's move on to my purple flippers. Okay, I'm gonna start with blue, blue and a tiny bit of white. And anytime I say white, when you're grabbing white, make sure you're grabbing clean white. That's part of the reason I always pull from the edge of my colors is so I can go all the way around that white and get clean each time. I see people dip right into the middle of their colors and you've just messed up the whole puddle, right? You wanna pull from the edges so you have unlimited clean white there. So blue, a little bit of clean white, and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do this one a little different. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of the flipper. Just painting the bottom. Oops. Blue, tiny bit of white, bottom part of the flipper. And now, I'm going to add red and a little bit of white. And I'm going to get this lovely purple color. Blend it into that blue just a little. Red, white. Oh, that's pretty. That's a pretty flipper. That's bright. If it's too bright, I can grab a little bit of blue, tone it down a little bit. All right, clean my brush out. Let's go one more time. Top flipper. Start with blue along the bottom. So blue, little bit of white, right along the bottom edge. Oh, I'm running out of clean blue. In there. Okay. There we go. Blue, little bit of white, then add red and white. Ooh, that's pretty. My turtle has the prettiest flippers. Okay, there we go. I think while those purple flippers are still wet, I'm gonna clean that brush out and I'm gonna do a little bit of highlight. This is optional, you don't need to do this, but I think I'm gonna take a little bit of clean white and go zhuzh right across the top of that flipper and brighten it up. Just a little, a little bit of zhuzh. Here we go. Mm, sassy. That is one sassy turtle. All right. So I'm gonna get ready next and move on to that shell. And remember, if at any point you feel I'm going too fast, you're, you're starting to get frustrated, take a breather, step back. It'll be fine. You can come back to the video later or you can watch and see how we do the rest of this, right? And then finish on your own later. All right. So, Shell, first thing I'm going to do is check. I'm going to go around with my finger here and where my flippers and the neck. Oh, I forgot to fill the tail in. I can paint the tail. I'm gonna paint the tail down here. I almost forgot. Let me do that real quick. 
So I'm gonna paint the tail. I'm gonna do it the way I did the head. I'm gonna do a little bit of blue. I'm just using my pointy brush because my tail's really small. So blue first and then clean it out. Little green, yellow, white. Right down the middle of the tail. Here we go. Okay, shoot, can't believe I almost forgot the tail. Okay, now we're ready to move on. Okay, so I'm gonna go around the edge, make sure I don't have any big chunks of paint. And you can do this with a paper towel. I just do it with my finger because I'm a heathen like that. But I wanna make sure I don't have any big chunks of paint that I'm gonna, when I put that orange on there, that I'm gonna drag through it and it's gonna dirty up my orange, my orange shell color. So now I'm gonna use my big brush, clean it out, dry it off. And I'm gonna start my shell like we did back in the beginning, that roundy round part, and then we'll put the scallops on. But I'm gonna use orange and a little bit of white. So big brush, a lot of orange, a little bit of white. Oh, and let's paint him in like a bullseye, round and round. And remember, we use the white, not necessarily to lighten the color, but to make that paint a little more, um, a little more smooth, a little more creamy. Okay. Um, try a little bit of red, Don. Yeah. Um, Don's question for those of you that didn't see her question was, I have pale orange. How do I darken it? Um, you could, people have a tendency to want to add black to darken it. I would not. That'll give you a real muddy color. Um, I would be tempted to use, use red to bring it down a little bit, test it on your plate. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Yeah. Yeah, go with that. Okay, so I've got that on there, that orange and white, filled that circle in. I'm gonna go back and paint over my scallops again, go round and round. Make sure I get every bit of that turtle shell painted. If you have a place where you can see like you can kind, I don't know if you can see it, but you can kind of see where my tail came into the, into the shell a little bit. You can see through that orange paint. I'm gonna add a little more white to that and that will patch that. Our brain tells us to add color to it to patch it. And that's not how this paint works. You have to patch it with white. That's why the Blick uh, white paint that we use is called block out white because it will block things out. So I'm gonna add just a little extra white down there and that will take care of it. Okay. Same thing with the neck. I've got a little, where the neck got into the shell a little bit. Just gonna add a little more white to it. Okay. Okay. All right, so I have my orange and white on there for my shell. I'm gonna add then to that dirty brush, that orange white on my brush, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm just gonna play a little. I'm gonna do a couple little shushes of yellow and white. 
Oh, just a couple little, couple little roundy rounds. I might stop there. I might be, maybe, maybe I might soften that a little. That's pretty. This is where there's power in doing it and just walking away and not overdoing it. I'm going to be okay with that swoosh of color in there. I'll love it later. I'm struggling with it a little right now, but I will love that later if I leave it alone. Okay. All right, so our next step, I'm gonna give you about five minutes. It's 8.15, about 8.20, we'll come back. I might run to the, run to the blow dryer, dry this a little bit. Our next step is to put um, lines on the shell and we're gonna do that in black first and it's gonna look, it's gonna look really aggressive. Don't worry, don't panic, okay? Nobody's gonna panic because we're gonna put the lines on there in black and you're gonna be like, what have I just done? But then we're gonna go over it with white to soften it. So let's take about a five minute break. I'm gonna um, turn my camera off and mute myself. I'm gonna head to the blow dryer, okay? And we'll be back in about five minutes, about 8.20 and we'll finish strong, okay? So you're gonna need um, a little bit of black paint for the next step. Uh, a little bit of clean white paint to finish out. Um, meow, meow. A little bit of clean black, a little bit of clean white. Okay, so ooh, four minutes, we'll be back. Okay, couple more minutes. So I'm back from the blow dryer. I just dried my dried my shell just a little bit because my next step is going to be to take a little bit of black paint with my little brush and uh, put the the shell lines on there. I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're gonna we're gonna finish this puppy up. It's all about the details now, right? We have, and you can do as much or as little as you want. We have all those really cool, bold colors on there. You could really stop at any point. I might give him eyeballs, but you could call it at any point and this would be a really cool painting just with those big blocks of bold color. But I'm gonna take it a step further and do a little bit of, a little bit of detail work. So we'll give it about a minute or so. Let's see, what, uh, what haven't we talked about? What do we need to talk about tonight? Um, Emily's not here. I would ask her about dinner, what she's having for dinner. She's not here. Um, I've, been in a, I've been in a funk lately. So uh, my dinner tonight was butter noodles. That is like the ultimate comfort food, butter noodles, right? My husband's like, what are you carving up for, honey? I said, mind your business, sir. I need butter noodles. Ah, goodness, butter. Toast, yeah. What do you put on that toast, Don? I just made it weird. Yeah, tell me about your toast. What do you put on it? 
I do like avocado toast. I like peanut butter toast. You know, let's be honest. I like bread. So really anything on my toast makes me happy. Ooh, butter. Mm. And please tell me you use the good butter. We don't mess around with, with yucky butter, right? We use the good butter. <laughs> For those of you that haven't been with us through this whole thing, butter. I have a, I have a thing with butter. We shouldn't talk about it. It's, it's not good. So early on in the, I got to tell you about the butter though. Early on in the pandemic, when you couldn't find things at the grocery store, right? Supply chain issues. When you couldn't find anything, there was no, oh, country, country crock, right? Old school. Yes, Bix. Yes. Cool, cool. So, um, ooh, apple butter sounds good. Oh my gosh, I haven't had apple butter in forever. I'll have to get some this fall because for me, that's a very fall thing. So early on in the pandemic, uh, when you couldn't get things, right? Went to the store to, to get our groceries all in one shopping trip and get back home. And we, we used whatever, like margarine or whatever, whatever they had. And they didn't have any of that. They only had that like really expensive $10 pack of like real butter. Oh my God, that was life-changing for me. So now I, I spend the money. It's an absurd amount of money on butter, but I get the good butter. I will skimp other places, but so silver lining during the pandemic, right? I found the love. I found a love of good butter. Okay. That's enough with butter. So let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to use my pointy brush with a little bit of black paint and I'm going to put some design on that shell. So stay with me as I show you how to do this. So pointy brush, clean it out, dry it off. Now my black paint has been hanging out here for about an hour, hour and a half, right? So it's got a little, it's got a little skin on it. It's getting little, it's getting a little sticky. It's getting a little thick. I'm going to take with a clean pointy brush, just a drop of water. And in the edge of my black, I'm gonna swirl that around and thin that down just a little bit. If I add just a drop of water to it, it's gonna help it flow a little easier across the canvas. I'll do this more in the summertime when it's a little warmer, paint dries a little faster, gets a little stickier. This is really helpful when you're working on like tree branches and you want things to really flow add just a drop of water right there in the edge and swish it around. Okay. So I'm going to start with, all right, somebody's got to tell me what shape this is. Okay. I'm going to start with straight across the top and down to the right, down, down to the left, down to the right back down and flat across the bottom. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, six sides. Anybody? Nobody? It's not an octagon. That's octagons eight. Help me, Lynn. Lynn's not even, Lynn's not even paying attention. She's like, I don't know. I want to say rhombus and it's not a rhombus. I keep waiting on somebody to type it in the chat. I don't know what, oh, Ree's on it. Hexagon, hexagon, well done, AVB. Hexagon it is. Okay, so we're starting with the black hexagon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then I, <laughs> I'm gonna do another one down below it. So I'm gonna have two hexagons on my turtle back. And you can see they're kind of weird and kind of, they're kind of broken and <laughs> is that ABB, that's Anne? Awesome, okay, thanks Anne. 
Okay, so I have two hexagons. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to that original circle. Remember that original white circle? Just kind of tracing around that. Oh, Bix, I'm so excited to see Rosie now. Okay. And then from every one of these points, I'm gonna go out to that circle. So from this point here, out. And point out. From this point, out. Out, 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 just like that. So two hexagons, I've got that circle. And then out, out, out. Okay. And then with a little more black paint, I'm going to go in between my scallops. So I have a bump. And then in the valley, I'm going to do just a little line. Burp. Burp. It's all about the sound effects. Burp. Burp. Okay. Now, again, it may look aggressive right now, but it's okay. We'll put some white on it and soften it down here in a little bit and it'll be it'll be good. It'll look more like shadowing. Okay. Oh my goodness. This here See if I move this, can you see? Honey girl, honey girl, hi honey. My babies laying over there being so, so good. Hi, Chug. Honey's not amused. Oh, there she is. There's a honey girl. Sweet babe. So, while you're finishing that up, we're gonna do one more thing with that with that black. We're gonna put eyes on. So while you're finishing up that shell, let me tell you a little bit about Honey. For those of you that don't know, so Honey is she came from the Union County Humane Society, whom I absolutely adore. She was found uh, along a roadside being dumped in January, in the middle of January, in the middle of the night. Um, still lactating she had just had puppies and was still lactating still had milk because people are can be awful um and they took her in they she was really really sick they got her they got her well uh, they never found puppies so the assumption is that someone bred her kept the puppies and just dumped her um she is the absolute sweetest thing on the planet and when she came into the Humane Society, because I do a lot of volunteer work for the Humane Society, I help them raise money. And when she came into the Humane Society, they named her after me because they said they could tell she had been through a lot and she was in really rough shape, but she was still happy and silly and goofy. And they said that she reminded them of me. So they named, they named me or named her after me. Fast forward five months, I avoided her for five months because we had sugar. I didn't need another dog and I met her and now she's here <laughs> because she is the sweetest baby on the planet. So other than my, other than my sugar. So I have the sweetest pups ever. So that's my honey story. Okay, let's put eyes on this dude, shall we? So black, I'm gonna use my little brush 
with some black. I, you're right, Dawn, I did need her. I needed her and she needed us and Sugar needed her. He's, he's such a good pup, but for him to have a sister now, it's amazing. So I'm gonna put the eyes on here and my eyes for now, they're just black. They are half on, I'm gonna get nice and close. They are half on and half off my turtle head. So it's just a circle, half on and half off. And the struggle is getting them the same size, right? So don't be afraid to, to flip your canvas around, make it work for you, get it in the position where it makes sense for you. And they're just black for now. Okay. <laughs> Those are goofy shaped. That's okay. All righty. So now we're down to we're down to details, right? We're gonna do a lot of a lot of shushing, a lot of swishing. We're gonna have a little bit of fun here. So I'm gonna take that pointy brush and clean it out, dry it off. And I'm gonna find some clean white and your white, it might be sticky too, cause it's been there for a while. So with that pointy brush, I'm gonna thin it down with just a little, just a drop of water. And I'm gonna play a little bit now. So I'm gonna do a little highlight and this is where I'm gonna start to move fast. And that's okay. Remember, you can go back and look at it. I think on your Zoom, you have the option to record this for yourself too, I think. But anyway, I'll post the recording later. So with my pointy brush and a little bit of white, I'm gonna do a little highlight across the nose. I'm gonna come down the side of the head, both sides. Let me get close so you can see. We do a little shush right there, shush right there. And again, this is just pointy brush and just white. I'm gonna come along the top of the flipper. And when I do this, it's one brush stroke and I move on. It is what it is, okay? I'm not, I'm not gonna go back. I will rarely ever go back and try and fix a brush stroke like this. No, no, Shug. Um, because then it starts to get weird. I'm just gonna leave it with whatever, whatever happens, right? Little zhuzh there, little zhuzh across there. I feel like the tail needs a little zhuzh. Okay. I'm gonna, with the white, I'm gonna go around the outside of the shell outside of those scallops. I'm gonna let the dogs out. Come on, friends. Watch you go. Okay. Then that white down a little. My white's getting a little, a little sticky. So every now and then I'll grab a drip of water and thin it down, going around the shell. Make your turtle as fancy as you want. I'm a swirly girl, so I'm gonna make him super fancy. I'm gonna put some swirls here. You don't have to do this but I do love a good swirl. Okay, a little swirl over on this one. And again, swirls, that's one of those things, one fluid movement and move on. If you go back and try to fix, it starts to get weird. I'll put a couple swirls up here. Oh, that looks good. Then when I'm, 
fairly confident that this black is dry on the shell, that line that I put, those lines that I put on, I'm gonna go back over those, okay? I'm gonna leave them show a little bit. Again, nothing that I'm doing here is, is perfect. It's all very messy. So I'm kind of covering the black lines. I'm kind of letting a little bit of it show. You can kind of see through my white underneath. That black that we put on there, it creates a shadow. Chunk, chunk of paint, there we go. I'm gonna come back around the shell. So all that black, I'm gonna go over it really loosely with some white. going back over all of it. Some of it I'm covering completely. Some of it you can still see. All about adding dimension to that shell. Here we go. If you get up close to it, it's messy. It really is a messy prospect. But you step back away from it, and the black and the white looks really cool. Okay. While I have white on my brush, I'm going to keep going, I think. Nope, I'm going to add... Um, I'm going to add weeds. I'm going to do weeds and then bubbles. I was going to do bubbles and then weeds. I'm not. I'm going to do weeds and then I'll place my bubbles around where my weeds go. So pointy brush, a little green, yellow, white, not mixing them together, just picking them up separately on my brush, right? Green, yellow, white, just kind of dragging through them. And I'm going to put some greens in. So let's see, I want a swirl of grass here. Ooh, maybe next time I get more green, more yellow. Oh, that's fun. I'm going to close that door. Oh, green, yellow, white. So I'm going to do a couple sections, a couple spots of uh, weeds down here at the bottom. And then once I have some down at the bottom, I'm going to add some that just kind of appear up here at the top. So let me do the ones at the bottom first. And you can make them straight, you can make them curvy, but I love that they're different shades of green. So when I pick up my paint, green, yellow, white, I'm getting a different shade of green each time I do it. Okay, once I've done that, I'm gonna go up here and do a little, a little swish and just have it just kind of disappear. Right, it just kind of, it comes down and just kind of fades off. Okay, maybe another little swish right there. That's it. Maybe I'll do one, maybe I'll do one over here too. A little green, a little yellow, green, yellow, white, maybe a little. Maybe a little swish right there that just kind of happens and disappears. That's it. Okay. So, greeneries on there. Okay. 
So now that I have my weeds on there and you see, I put some up over my turtle shell that gives it a little bit of dimension, right? So don't be afraid to put those up in front of your turtle a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take that little brush now and clean it out. And I need the tiniest bit of clean white. I'm gonna do some bubbles. And the things, the thing that makes these look like bubbles, it's a circle and then a little swish in the top right of the circle. And I like to think of bubbles in clusters. You rarely see just one bubble alone, right? You see them in, in uh, little clusters of bubbles. So let me do, let me do one down here. So little brush, excuse me, a little bit of white. I'm gonna get close. So I'm gonna do a circle down here. And then in the top right, blurp. And then maybe a smaller one here. Little top right, blurp. A little more paint. Maybe, maybe a smaller one right there. Blurp. Okay, let's do a couple clusters of bubbles. So maybe I have a big bubble here. Top right, blurp. And then another one here. Maybe one more here. Maybe even another little one. Getting smaller as we go up. Okay. Let's do a couple more here. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Guys, we were just about done with this one. A couple more bubbles down here. Okay. All right, friends. One of the last things I'm going to do um, whenever we do a creature, we need to put light in their eyes. Okay, that's what's gonna bring them to life. And this is gonna be really weird, but this is how we're gonna put light in the turtle's eyes. We're, we're gonna put a smiley face in each eye. Super weird. And now that I've said that, you won't be able to unsee it. And I apologize for that. I'm gonna use my pointy brush with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. I'm gonna mix it together here. And in each turtle eye, I'm gonna put a smile right there at the bottom, smile and dot, dot. I'm do the same thing over here on the other eye. Smile, dot, dot. And there we go, there's the light in our turtle's eyes. And now you won't be able to see anything except yellow smiley faces in your turtle's eyes. And I'm so sorry. But anybody else will look at this and they won't see that. Oh my goodness, Don. Oh, okay, so with that, we are done, friends. So the very last thing, I'm gonna have everybody stay on because um, we have a turtle guest and it looks like we have a kitten guest and I'll give you guys all the chance to unmute yourselves here in a second. Oh my gosh, so cute. Oh, I almost drank that, that was almost bad. Let me put my paint water down. <laughs> I was hugging it like I hugged my coffee cup. There we go. Um, so the very last thing every artist should do is sign their painting. We usually sign at the bottom right or bottom left. 
your signature is whatever you want it to be, right? Oh my God, it's Rosie. All right, stand by, Bix. Oh my gosh, Rosie. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so um, make sure you sign your painting. You can sign on the front if you want, or you can sign on the back. If you sign on the back, sign on the frame. Don't sign on the canvas because you don't want it to bleed through. So with that, I am going to go ahead, give me just a moment and give everybody the opportunity to unmute. There we go. All right, Vic, show us Rosie. Here she is. Oh, so what do we know about Rosie? Well, I've, we've had her over 15 years. And I should have been measuring her all these years. So what I don't think she? she's, she's a red-footed tortoise. Oh, she's beautiful. But she is an enclosure outside. She's a little yard and it has a sign. <laughs> she's plants and then inside. And if I could kiss her and cuddle with her, I would. This is how I kiss her at night. I love you. So I had to do the turtle painting. Thank you, Shauna Sue. Had to, had to. <laughs> so make sure and send me, I wanna see pictures of everybody's paintings, okay? So make sure and email those to me, mes message me on Facebook. I wanna see them all. Oh my gosh, Dawn. So this is your latest rescue? Yes, Brianna went and rescued this little guy. He was much smaller. We've had him about two weeks now. Two or three weeks. Two or three weeks and he was a lot smaller. He washed in with the floodwaters to a lady up in Richwood. She knew all about horses. She knew about dogs, but knew nothing about cats. And we've got quite a few rescues here. So she went and got him. He had a sprained um, elbow. elbow. So he had to take some medicine for that. But he's growing. He's thriving. And he is not afraid to play with the bigger boys around here, running, chasing. And yeah. And the reason I have him is because he comes to me. And when he wants you to pick him up, he tries to climb your leg. Well, if you have oh, wow. shorts on, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel the best. But yeah, he, Brianna named him Rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy. And I swear he should be named Parrot because he loves to be up on your shoulder sleeping or just riding around the house. <laughs> He's an ordinary little guy, that's for sure. So say that one more time. He washed in with the floodwaters. Yes, remember all the rain we just had? It like, was like July 6th or something like that, I want to say. But she had like, she breeds dogs. So she has like, um, dog crates out in her barn that she doesn't use for like little puppy play pins yeah. and she went out there and he was stuck he had his head and his elbow stuck in one of the squares on the grate so oh he was able to like she just heard him crying so she went out and she got him and brought him in and like gave him a warm bath to get him warmed up because he was really cold and then he just started like eating all she had was dog food so she was giving him wet dog food <laughs> So I went and got him and when I took him to the vet, they were like, yeah, he's probably like three and a half or four weeks old. So yeah. he was just really tiny. He's a little guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's gorgeous. Well, thank yeah. you guys for taking care of him. <laughs> he's a little well, We're like, we're one of those that if it comes through our way and we can do something for it to try to help it, we can, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, we have five goats three of which are rescues. Stop outing me for we, everybody. Stop outing for everybody. We've got eight cats, eight. Plus we have our dog. She was a rescue also. Some of my chickens were gonna be in the freezer camp, so I took them. So she rescued some of the hens. Hens, some of them are not laying very much or often, but they're gonna die here happy, you know? We just, it's the way it is. You know, your heart is there. <laughs> you, you know, when I took in my chickens, I figured I was starting a, uh, hospice for chickens, right? Did I, have I told you that? No. So we got our chickens from, we, we've only had chickens a couple of years and I was afraid to get chicks because I was, I was afraid I'd do something wrong and I'd kill them. And then I'd feel awful and I couldn't live with myself. And we have yeah. friends that had a flock and they were getting ready to travel and they're, they're retired and they're like, we don't want our chickens anymore. Do you want them? They might not live long. I mean, they're, they're old girls. And I was like, yes, that way, if they die, I know they had a good life. They'll yes. be my introduction into chickens. I won't be responsible for killing chicks, right? And um, that's how we got our chickens and they're still here. <laughs> yes. 
she so got brought a rooster in because we keep having um a hawk, a hawk that yep. has gotten hold of a fair like amount six of my chickens one summer it was awful so three babies hatch i named them littlefoot ducky and petrie two of them fell in buckets and drowned so we've oh. only got one baby i know i felt so bad it was awful oh, yeah I'm sorry i did <laughs> you'll find this funny someone dumped well not this part someone dumped two roosters out in plain city on like some back country road so i got in my car and i like went and i picked them up thankfully this like kind man stopped and helped me because i got the bigger one pretty easy but the littler one was like giving me a run for my money and someone on Facebook contacted me. She has over 80 hens. So she took them both and they're like, just living the best life ever. 60, they with, went to 60 hens. 80. <laughs> oh, 80, 80, 80. hens. With, with 80 ladies? You bet yeah. they're living the life. Yeah. <laughs> she sends me pictures and stuff. And I guess the little, the younger one thinks it's a dog and he like follows them around and stuff. <laughs> Oh, that. so that's I'm what's perfect. kind of disgusting is the amount of people who are literally just dumping animals left and right dumping them uh -huh. Uh -huh. i've seen the humane society begging people please make sure we're here it's yeah. terrible yeah so at the humane society, society they will they'll randomly like get there and have like cats in a box on the doorstep oh. and the and this heat's been nasty this summer's been horrible mm -hmm it's ridiculous uh -huh. yeah and uh -huh. shelters everywhere everywhere are just overrun yeah. overflowing and it's like i understand times are tough but you know what's a bag of chicken and a box of rice you can cook for your dog or right you know what i mean like we just when you take yeah. them on you take them on for life that's how we believe in it that's right yep that's yeah. right us too yeah so i will have a hospice here for chickens <laughs> <laughs> brianna she she's same same thing same thing. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end tonight. This has been lovely, friends. I needed this this evening. Make sure and send me your pictures. I would love to see them. I see somebody's already sent me theirs. So I would love to see them. And give me, I don't know, probably tomorrow sometime, I'll download the video. And nice, Lynn. That's gorgeous. I do have a quick question for you. If you can help me for yeah. one second. My, remember I had the light orange, so I had to mix the red. Well, that orange is crappy and it's really thin. So I ended up with the nasty drip here. I don't know if you can see it. What should I do to try to cover that drip up? Can you see it's like under his Can you move it a little bit? Oh, I see. And it's- It's red. Can orange you add red. grass there? Can you add? Oh, it's so smart. Go in and just add the a grassy thing there. That would work. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, the other option would be to try to like match the background and cover it over and it's going to look like a patch. No, I would add grass there. I would just add some some weeds there. Okay, that's what I'll do. Then. Thank you so much. Thank you You're for your welcome. time. Thank you for all the positive you spread throughout Marysville anyhow. <laughs> Have a Thank good night. You guys. All right, I'll see y'all later. Night. Bye -bye.